is Lisa here from Andrew Designs. Today I have a quick little tutorial for you on how I like to create zipper pockets. So throughout the tutorial I'm going to show you how to draw the box on your zipper pocket piece, how to attach it to its corresponding bag panel, how to turn that through to create the box and get a really nice rolled out seam, how to install the zipper and then how to attach the remaining zipper pocket piece to create your entire pocket. So it's nice and quick and easy, let's get started. To create a zipper pocket such as the ones included in the Creatives Tote, this is the general process that I use. Bear in mind that the instructions and measurements will vary depending on what pattern you're using. So this is just specific to the Creatives Tote, however the process and the steps are very similar across my range of patterns. So to start you're going to take one of your zipper pocket pieces and you're going to flip it over so that you are looking at the wrong side or the interfaced side of the piece. Make sure you have it orientated so that the top of the fabric is at the top and that will be typically one of the long sides. Because I'm using fabric that's not directional it doesn't matter, however if you do have directional fabric make sure that it is orientated the correct way so the top is at the top. From there we're going to measure down one inch and we're going to draw a line almost all the way across. The easiest way to do that is to use my rotary ruler. And I'm just going to line it up on the panel at the one inch mark. I'm going to take my tailor's chalk and I'm just going to rule a line almost all the way across. From there I'm actually just going to rotate it because I find it easier to measure working in this direction rather than top down. And I'm going to rule a second line a quarter inch on from that line we just drew so it'll be one and a quarter inches up from that raw edge and again almost all the way across it doesn't need to be the whole distance and finally we're going to do a third line again a quarter of an inch up making it a total of one and a half inches up from the raw edge so at this point you should have three lines almost all the way across and a quarter inch apart from here we're going to draw the vertical lines which will close off our box and that is what we're going to stitch to create the hole and the entry for our pocket. So for this particular pocket the width of the box needs to be a total of 9 inches wide. So in order to do that and to make sure it is centered I'm just going to fold and mark the center of this panel. Just like that and then from there I can measure four and a half inches out on either side of that center mark and I know my box is going to be centered exactly on that zipper pocket panel. So I'm going to place my ruler at four and a half and I'm just going to make sure it's nice and square and then I'm going to draw and I just freehand these little lines one at the zero, four and a half is the center and nine is the other end. So once we've drawn our vertical lines we have a nice box looking like this. One other part we need to draw in before we go and stitch it is little snipping lines. So when we cut it open we're going to cut along the center line, however we're not going to cut right to the end, we're going to cut to about half an inch out from each short end and I, again I just eyeball it and then we're going to snip using snips out to each corner. So I just freehand draw a little triangle just like this which is a rough snipping guide. So once you have your box drawn and your little triangles it's time to place it on the panel that we're going to stitch it to. So as I said earlier I am using the Creatives Tote as this example so I've got my lining panel here and first I'm just going to square up my lining panel with my cutting mat so I always like to make sure my panels and everything is square with each other so I'm going to line up my center mark with this line here I'm going to check that the bottom is also square with that same line and then it's ready to have the zipper pocket panel attached. So we're going to make sure that these two panels are right sides together so we're still looking at the wrong side of our zipper pocket panel. If you had directional fabric make sure it is orientated correctly and that you have the top edge where your box is at the top. We're going to place them right sides together and we're just going to eyeball the horizontal alignment for now. We want it right nice in the center. 
for this pattern this pocket piece needs the top raw edge of the pocket piece needs to be three and a half inches down from the top raw edge of the lining panel that measurement will be different depending on what pattern you're working so again refer to the pattern directions that you're working with to find out exactly where you need to put your zipper pocket panel to make sure it's nice and level and nice and centered i'm going to use my rotary ruler you can already see that needs to come down and I'm going to line up the center of my ruler with the center of my lining panel and that line on the cutting mat. I'm going to pull my ruler down to one, two, three and a half inches and make sure it is all square with my lines on the cutting mat. And once I'm happy with the ruler placement on the lining panel placement, then I'm going to position my zipper pocket. I'm going to make sure my center mark is aligned with the center of my ruler and the top raw edge of the pocket panel is a hard up against the edge of the ruler. That looks good. So from there, we can take our ruler off. We can just turn our fabric. And all I need to do from here is just pop a few pins along this box that we've drawn just to hold it in place prior to stitching. For a box of this size, I usually put about four pins. It is personal preference on that one just like that. So that is ready to stitch. So come with me, I'll pop over to the machine and show you how to stitch that in place. To stitch around the box, we're going to stitch around the outside lines all the way around in a nice rectangle. Make sure you have your needle set to the needle down position so it helps when you turn at the ends. And also we're using a normal stitch length of about two to 2.5 millimeters. To start, I'm just going to start just before that back corner. Just going to lower the foot. I'm just going to make a couple of stitches forwards and back to lock our threads in. And remove the pin and then we're just going to stitch nice and straight along that top line. When we get to this first corner, we're going to stitch right into it. We're going to leave our needle down and we're going to turn our work. Oops. And then we're going to stitch down this first short side of the box. Right into the next corner, drop your needle, turn your work. In my case, I need to fold my panel up, drop your foot and stitch along the bottom edge. When you get to the next corner, drop your needle, turn, stitch up, and then turn and back to where you started. And when you get back to the beginning, just go a bit past where you started and then make a couple of stitches to reinforce your threads. And we can finish off. So that is our box stitched. So from here, come with me, we'll pop back to our work surface and we will cut this open and prepare it for our zipper. So now that our first zipper pocket panel is attached, we need to cut our box open. So I like to do this with my rotary and my ruler. However, if you prefer, you're welcome to use scissors. Just remember we're cutting from this inner point here along the center line to this inner point here. So I like to just turn my work sideways, place my ruler down the center of the box, and I just eyeball where to start, cut through, cut along, and eyeball where to stop. And that's pretty good. So from there, I take my little snips, and working on one end at a time, I just snip. So I've missed my pencil line, but it doesn't matter because I'm still a good distance from the stitching on the side, so that's fine. I'm just going to snip out to the corner as close as I can get to the corner without cutting the stitching and I'm going to do that going down as well then I'm going to turn and repeat that at the other end and our box is cut open 
So come with me, we're going to head to our pressing station and I'll show you how I like to press these seams so that they're really rolled nice and flat and they give a really good finish. So to press the seams of the zipper pocket nice and flat, I actually like to do it in two stages. However, before I do that, if, for example, my panel had fleece or foam attached to the back, obviously in this example it doesn't, but if I was installing the zipper on the outer panel of a bag, for example, before I press and turn my pocket, I actually find it gives a much better result if on the fleece or foam side of the panel, you trim the fleece or foam out of the box first. So you cut it open like we've just done, and then with your snips, you just cut as close to the stitching, but obviously not cutting the stitching, as you can to reduce the bulk. That gives a much flatter, tidier pocket. So it's just a little tip there, food for thought. You don't have to take that on board if you don't want to, but I've found it gives a really good result. To press the panel, first I take the bottom of the zipper pocket and I just feed it through the hole. And then with my iron, I make sure that back seam is also pointing up still and I give that bottom seam a good press. From here, I just tuck the top through so that the bottom sits flatter, so that it's essentially all turned through. But then I tuck the bottom of the pocket down. Still working on that bottom seam, we've just moved the top out of the way essentially. And then I roll the seam out along the bottom and give it a good press. So we're essentially pressing it halfway and then all the way around. Much easier to roll the seam out that way and get a really nice flat seam. From there we're just going to repeat the same for the top. So press, press the top through and you can almost kind of finger press it to get it started and then give it a good press with the iron. Then turn your panel over, fold that up, roll it out and give it a press. So while we're looking at the lining side or the inside of the pocket, we can pull the short edges out ever so slightly, give them a bit of a press. And then finally, just flip your panel over so we're looking at the right side of the lining and just give it another good press, making sure there's no puckers or gathers in these corners. If there is, try and work them out as best you can. It doesn't matter if you get puckers or gathers in these corners on the pocket side because that'll actually be covered with the zipper and the stitching and everything, so you won't see them. Whereas you would see them if they, were stay, if they remained on this side. So try and get this side as flat as possible first before we install the zipper. And that is our box ready to go. A further note on if your panel has fleece or foam attached. One thing I really like to do, so as you can see right now, this is sitting really nice and flat. It's only a couple of layers of quilting cotton and a couple of layers of interfacing. If I had fleece or foam here, this would be sitting up more and would be lifting and, and giving a bit more of a 3D effect, I suppose. So because of the extra thickness added from fleece or foam, what I often do is I will glue, temporarily glue these panels down to hold them nice and flat prior to installing the zipper. So I'll show you what I mean, even though I don't, I don't feel I need to do it for this panel because it's really flat already, but just so you know what I mean for when you do have fleece or foam attached, all I do is fold the panel forward run a line along the top and then stick it down. I also do that along the bottom and stick it down and I also do the sides. So this is just a sew line glue stick which is what I love for this sort of work. And once you've stuck all your sides down you can then set them with the iron which dries the glue a whole lot faster. You can also use a sewing tape, just something that can be removed because once the zipper is installed we actually lift this up and we need to access the sides here so we want something that's just a temporary hold so that is much flatter. So you can do it for this, this sort of thickness if you want, I don't normally but I definitely would recommend giving it a go and using a glue or tape if you have fleece or foam on the back of your panel. Just helps things sit nice and flat prior to installing the zipper. 
So from here, pop back to your workstation and we're going to install the zipper to the inside of this pocket and get it ready to stitch in place. To install the zipper on a zipper pocket, I personally prefer always to use a wash away quilters tape or wonder tape, um, mainly because it can be repositioned. So if you find you put your fabric onto the zipper, the zipper's not straight or you're not happy with the alignment of the teeth within the box, you can easily peel and restick quite a few times before the tape loses its sticky. Glue can get a little bit messy um, and some glues definitely are not repositionable. Um, I just, I really find the tape is what I've found to be the best solution for positioning the zips. Um, some people prefer to use pins, that's absolutely fine. However, this is just what I prefer to do. So on the inside of your box, on essentially the inside of the zipper pocket, all I do, so the tape I use is a little bit wider than Wonder Tape. And as a result, I don't want it that wide I don't actually need it that wide so I actually take a length and then cut it down the center to create two strips just means my tape goes a little bit further and nine times out of ten I actually don't have to remove the tape afterwards because it gets concealed under the zipper tape which is always nice so we're just going to go ahead and place tape all around the edge of the box So that's taped up and ready to go. So from here I'm just going to take the paper off the tape to expose the sticky. Oops. There we go and then we're ready to align our zipper. So what I like to do with my zippers is have the bottom stop showing for these types of pockets. I just think it gives a nice feature and it means that when you come to stitch you know that you're not going to hit it because it's just inside the box and it's clearly visible. So what I like to do, what I find easiest is to place the zipper down on my work surface right side up and at this point you need to decide which direction you want your zipper to open from. So I like them opening from left to right which means I'm going to start positioning it from right to left. We position the closed end first work our way along and then position the open end last because we may need to move the pull depending on the length or width of the box. So starting with your zipper down on your work surface you're literally just going to hover your panel above the zipper and because I've got I'm working from right to left so I'm going to use the stop as my starting point and I'm going to put it just inside my box and centered vertically within the box and then I'm just going to work from right to left adjusting the fabric as need be it's quite a wide pocket this one so I'm just going to adjust to make sure that my zipper teeth are nice and horizontal in the box and as centered as they can be I don't want a zipper that's all winky wonky when I get to the open end I had to move my pull there again I'm just going to make sure that my teeth are still nice and centered and that when my pull is right up closed as it would be once the zip is done that it looks really nice and central that actually looks really good I think I might just tweak this end of skewing up a little bit so what do I need to do there I think I just need to move my stop ever so slightly down so I'm just going to peel it back straighten it up and stick it back down there we go so that looks really good I'm quite happy with that let's push it down a bit there that's the beauty of tape is you can lift and reposition your fabric quite a few times. You can be as fussy as you like to. Once you've got your zipper in place and you're happy with its alignment, just work your way around and really stick it to the tape so you know it's held in place. You can double check on the back that everything's nice and flat. And once you're happy with it, come with me, we'll head over to the machine and we will stitch it in place. So to stitch our zipper in place, I like to just use my walking foot. I find that the thickness of the fabric, and especially if you've got fleece or foam underneath, lifts the foot enough that it doesn't interfere with the teeth of the zipper, so I don't change my foot for these sorts of pockets. I've got a thread on the top that matches my fabric, and underneath I have a thread in there, a bobbin thread that matches my zipper. 
which is obviously a different color to my fabric. I have my stitch length set at almost a top stitching length. We are top stitching, but we also want to make sure our pocket is nice or our zipper is nice and secure. So my stitch length is about three millimeters and I have my needle set to the needle down position. To install this to stitch it in place, I'm going to use a 1 16th of an inch seam allowance. So we're nice and close to the fold of the fabric, which means we're most likely gar definitely guaranteed to catch the zipper tape at the underneath. So to start, I'm going to start on the bottom edge and I'm going to just lower my foot so that at the back, my foot is just inside the zipper pull. So I'm as far, as close to the zipper pull as possible, basically. I'm gonna grab my threads. And because we're top stitching, we're not going to do lots of reinforcing stitches. We're going to do one stitch forward and back just to lock our threads in. And then we're going to stitch along this bottom edge, up against the edge of the fabric, as nice and straight as we can. So when we get to this first short edge, we're going to go one stitch past that end. We're going to keep our needle down and we're going to rotate our work so we're ready to stitch up that first short edge of the box. Drop your foot and we're going to stitch up and over the zipper all the way to one stitch past that top edge of the box. From here, lock reverse in. We're going to stitch all the way back down to where we just came from. Take reverse off and then stitch back to the top again. So each short end will have three passes just to make sure the teeth are really well locked in place. Once you're at this next top edge, keep your needle down, lift your foot and rotate your work. And if need be, if you're like me, you'll need to sort of fold your panel to make things a bit tidier and manageable. Drop your foot and we're going to stitch along the top of the box now. When you've stitched as far enough forward as you can and your foot is starting to hit the pull, just pop your needle down, lift your foot, and we're just going to move the pull out of the way. The easiest way I've found to do this is just with a sewing gauge or you can use an awl. And instead of grabbing the pull and trying to pull it back under the foot, which can get difficult at the best of times, there's not a lot of room under there, especially for fingers and zipper pulls. So what I like to do instead is use my sewing gauge. I just use the point at the front. And all I do in this little hole at the end of the pull is I push down, which releases the locking mechanism, and then back, which then moves the pull back under the foot. If you just push it back straight away, you'll find that it locks because of the locking mechanism in the zipper. So you have to either lift up or push down to release it. The easiest way, because we have a foot, is to push down and then slide it back under the foot. So I'm just going to do that now and just make sure you hold the front of the zipper, which is under here, hold it taut so that there's sort of resistance, I guess, to push against and it just slides back very easily. Once that's out of the way, lower your foot and continue down to the remaining short edge of the box. Remember to stop one stitch past that short edge, turn, and we're going to stitch down and over the teeth. If you've used a metal zipper, you will need to be careful stitching over the teeth and you may even need to walk your needle over so you reduce the chance of breaking your needle. Once you're one stitch past the bottom, lock or reverse in and we're going to stitch back up. And then back down again. Turn. And we're just going to stitch right back to where we started. And when we get back to where we started, we're just going to go one stitch forward and backwards. And then we're going to finish off. We will tie our threads through to the back to secure them, which will give a much tidier finish. So there's our zipper nicely stitched in place. So come with me, we'll pop back to our work surface and we will continue. Now that our zipper is stitched in place, before we tie our threads off, what I like to do is on the back, I like to do a bit of a check to see if there's any tape or glue poking out that's going to cause stickiness for the user. So thankfully I can't feel any tape, which is what I like, because then I know that 
my tape is well hidden I don't have to remove it however if you have glue or tape showing now is the time to remove it to remove tape it's really easy you just take your nail run your nail between your zipper pocket fabric and the zipper tape and once you've separated them you can then grab the tape get it started and pull it up and along and it will come off okay that's the beauty of the wash away tape if you've used glue you might need to actually wash it away and then leave the panel to dry before continuing once the back is tidy we're just going to thread these front threads through to the wrong side or the inside of the pocket and tie a simple reef knot to secure them Oop. and then before we pass them through between the panels we're just going to detach them if you glued them down if you used fleece or foam so just detach them all the way around so we're going to need that for the next step anyway there we go and then once you've done the knot in your threads we can pass these threads through to the wrong side where's my needle there. and just give a tug to help that knot go through and trim those off so once those threads are tidied up all we need to do is then tidy up the edges of the zipper so if your zipper is overhanging like mine is then all I do is just fold the lining panel or the bag panel that you're working on out of the way so you can see the edge of the pocket and you can just rotary or snip them off so that the edge of the zipper is flush with the edge of the pocket it doesn't have to be very tidy nobody's going to see it so that just gets rid of a little bit of bulk so from here we've only got one more step to do and that is to attach the remaining zipper pocket panel to our assembled zipper pocket and we will be finished so to finish off our zipper pocket all we need to do is attach our remaining pocket panel so we're simply going to place them right sides together again if you've used directional fabric make sure it is it is orientated correctly and up the top edges up the top along with your assembled pocket piece place them right sides together and matching all raw edges we're going to pin them together however we're going to pin them the, the way that we're going to stitch it which is funnily enough not this way up the reason I don't like to stitch them this way up is because the bulk is then underneath you can't see what you're doing it can get messy and you run the risk of actually catching this in your seam which then means unpicking nobody really enjoys that so I prefer to have my panel right side up and I fold my lining up and out of the way so that my zipper pocket panels are flat on my needle plate in my machine there's nothing underneath to get caught that shouldn't and it's a much easier process so to pin these panels we're just going to work down one side at a time and of a pocket this size you probably only need about three pins in it the fabric kind of just holds itself together on its own so I've just pinned one side and all I did was fold the lining panel out of the way I'm going to turn it round and repeat for the other side again just folding my lining panel or your bag panel whatever pattern you're making just fold it out of the way and pin pin and pin and then the same for the top and bottom of the pocket So one there and there and fold that down and pin the top as well so just make sure those raw edges meet just poke that through so it doesn't hit where the zip oh, is joined and where'd my pin go there this one so our zipper pocket is pinned all the way around just a note if you are turning your bag through the zipper pocket and the pattern says not to stitch the bottom edge because you need to leave it open to turn through don't stitch that bottom edge like I'm about to do otherwise you will have to get that seam rip out unfortunately so from here come with me we'll head over to the machine and we will stitch this pocket and then we will be finished 
So do stitch the back of the zipper pocket in place. Make sure that your bag panel is right side up so that your zipper pocket pieces are underneath. And all we're going to do to start is fold that bag panel out of the way. Make sure you have a normal stitch length set of about 2 to 2.5 millimetres. Your needle set to the needle down position and we're going to stitch with a seam allowance of half an inch. We're going to start in the bottom left hand corner which is why my panel is upside down and that means that if you have to leave the bottom open to turn through when we get to that bottom right corner you can simply stop there and not stitch across the bottom like we're going to. Just going to place my fabric under my foot. I'm just going to start from the very start of the fabric just because I can. I'm going to hold my tails and make a few stitches forward and backwards to reinforce. And then we're just going to stitch up that first side. And as you go, just rearrange your bag panel out of the way so that it is nice and easy for you to stitch your pocket pieces together. As you come up to your zipper teeth, just go nice and steady over those just in case, especially if you've used a metal zipper. And then we're going to stop half an inch-ish, it's very approximate, from that um, top or close most raw edge of the fabric. And we're going to turn, drop your foot rearrange your bag panel so it is out of the way now for this edge of the pocket and stitch. When you get half an inch from the next raw edge, just drop your needle down, turn, rearrange your bag panels so they're out of the way, drop your foot and continue down the next side. So when we get close to this bottom edge, this is the bottom of the pocket. So if you are turning your bag through this pocket, you will stitch right to the edge of the fabric, reinforce your stitches and finish off. You will leave the bottom edge of the pocket open. However, we're not doing that with this pocket. We are literally closing it up to create one complete pocket. So I'm just going to turn and stitch across the bottom edge to finish. get back to the start we're just going to cross over our original stitching reinforce and finish off and that is our zipper pocket all complete stitched attached all done and just like that you have a beautiful zipper pocket installed on the bag panel of the bag pattern you are making i hope you found this video helpful and i hope you've learned a few little tips and tricks as well remember if you have any questions whatsoever please feel free to contact me via the contact page of my website and until next time, happy sewing.